Hi, hi, it's Joey Reynolds Rap, and I am wearing black and white because it's a new television series on Netflix where a white family takes in a black kid to be a basketball player. No, a black family takes in a white kid. I don't know. It's, it's, all, it's all about the inclusion, and it's a series that's coming up. Everybody's, everybody's in, in everybody else's business, so you, you, you can't figure it out. Even at church today, you know, at the Calvary Calvary. Christian church handing out the Jewish invite. <laughs> yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is the time when everybody is blended. We have the blended family. There are certain things that don't go together. They never will, like Preparation H and toothpaste. Uh, ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to happen. Uh, X lax and uh, hey, <laughs> sleeping pills. Don't mess with don't mess with m nature. <laughs> and the vaccine. Let me tell you now. This is how they ought to distribute it to kids. Lace the candy on Halloween with that vaccine. That's how everybody will be covered. <laughs> it'll be easy. Give them gummy bears with the uh, Fizex, and it'll be a wonderful treat or trick. <laughs> and everybody wearing a mask. We Spider Man or. The, my favorite is the fan of the opera because half of it's black, you know. See, now he was way ahead of time. And that was my friend that, that played uh, the Phantom for a number of years in uh, New York, Phantom of the Opera. It was a beautiful, beautiful presentation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's show. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's, some, there's some good things in life that, uh, that go together, but there are other things that you don't want to mess with. Uh, I wouldn't mess with certain things because I don't know how to, first of all, I don't know how to put them together again, so I don't take them apart. That would be one thing. Another thing to mention, just on the philosophical level, the problem with America, hey, <laughs> you can't fix a broken hammer with a broken hammer. You need a new tool. So what we do is we take a broken hammer and we try to fix it with another broken hammer. Wow, isn't that wonderful? So we wind up with a bunch of broken hammers. So in America, what we need to do is come up with a new tool, and it sure is not a missile. <laughs> and if it, if, it, if it contains oil, it'll fly immediately. <laughs> but you know, we don't like that. We don't like, we, the thing that really we, we should have had on this planet, I drove it for a year, was a hydrogen car. And you can ask Judith Reagan, who wrote Private Parts, she was in that car. Willis Pyle, the uh, Walt Disney, Animator, the last of the living animators, did Pinocchio, Snow White, Fantasia. He, he rode in the car. Peter Bogdanovich, the movie director, the mayor. I've had everybody in that hydrogen car. That's what we should have. Why? Because it doesn't pollute. That's why it's all water-based. And it's not dangerous. And don't match it to the von Hindenburg uh, because that exploded in Lakehurst, New Jersey years ago with hydrogen fuel. It's not really what happened. But... That's a whole other story. But let's say that we have a hydrogen car and uh, it gets, let's see, how much did it cost me to fill it? I went 275 miles and it cost me $3. Wow. <laughs> Can you imagine? The price of a gallon of gas filled the whole car for a week. Now, see, that's the way you want to have it. And on the, it was called the Equinox, incidentally, long before Chevy renamed this uh, V8 engine or six, V6 engine they got. The Equinox was a hydrogen car. They made a half a dozen of them for uh, us to drive. I drove one of them for a year, and they handed them out to a couple of suspects in Los Angeles, because that's where everybody drives cars. And it was a great, great experiment. But you know, when Obama had everybody come to the White House from General Motors because they wanted a bailout, those guys arrived first class with private planes and uh, helicopters, and they, they, they didn't look like they were too much in poverty. So he cut out that program. That program was to develop the hydrogen car because they were very expensive on, in the prototype, like you, you know they were with the electric cars. The problem with the electric car is the battery. What's wrong with it? Well, you know what's wrong with it. It doesn't have, it's not, this is not the, uh, the ever, ever ready bunny. <laughs> this is something that you have to play. You, you got to play with it a little bit. No, uh, hey, I know, I know, I, I seem like that's my problem. But, you know, I, I drove one of those electric cars from, I was on XM Sirius Radio, and one of the producers drove me to Palm Springs, which was 90 miles, and we were running out of fuel at about 
70 miles. So we had to stop somewhere. And it was nighttime, and there was no, there was no place to uh, plug in. So I wound up taking an Uber. So I said, this defeats the whole purpose of the electric car. You know, I went electric for part of it, and then I had to get into a gas car by uh, some uh, taxi. You know, I had to pay. I had to pay for it all of a sudden. Here, my ride was quite expensive. Uh, I'll tell you something. You know, you're not going to get around uh, anything until everybody decides on it. And that's why we're having all these problems with everything. We, we, we all don't have a vote. If you put everybody around the same table, we could duke it out, you know. <clears throat> See, I didn't want a vaccine until I saw Elvis get one. When he was going into the Army, I said, oh, well, I'm going to get me one of those. Because I'm, oh, hey, you know, we follow celebrities. That's all. So you put one of our celebrities out there getting a vaccine, and it ain't going to be Bruce Springsteen. Uh, we about had enough of that, uh, the, the boss. <laughs> <laughs> we need somebody who really, who's really a heart. The Rock would be good. Have him get a vaccine. Maybe he's even done that. Or let's say a woman, you know, a strong woman. We need a, a strong woman. Incidentally, I was watching a, a Shakespeare play. I don't know why, but it was it popped up on my screen. And I had, uh, I know why. It was on subscription television on Paramount. That's why it was, I had the subscription. I may as well use it up. So I, I tapped onto this uh Shakespeare play of uh, uh, what, what's the one I like? I like I like the one that is uh, ooh I can't think of it. Well, whatever it is, the guys are women. Uh, now wait a minute, don't get don't get too crazy. But uh, Shakespeare hired men to play women. You know he never hired women to play women parts in Macbeth or any anything he wrote. When he put on his plays, he had men in drag. He was. <laughs> <laughs> that this is right. He had they had you know a guy with a nice bust. It was <laughs> very curious. Now there's a blend. <laughs> there's a blend. <laughs> That's a match. <laughs> it's like going to Walgreens for milk. You know, I mean, why do we? Do? <laughs> These are things that they don't go together. What we make? We want everybody to be everything. Every every, and the black community in Harlem. We used to say when I lived in Harlem, we used to say everything is everything. Well, everything became everything, and nothing about it is good. <laughs> Everything's not supposed to be everything. It's, it's just not. <laughs> uh, unto itself, I would say many things are quite wonderful. But when you mix them with something else, you mix and match, uh, even when you go to Marshall's or Ross for clothes and you buy things that uh, they only have one pair left. If you ever fall in love with those shoes at Nordstrom and, and their clearance, you're never going to have them again. You know, I mean, it's a one of a kind. <laughs> and it's a leftover, and it's, a, it's not a blend. <laughs> it doesn't go with anything else. <laughs> Just like this, this uh, broadcast I'm doing here, you know. Do you know how many people don't watch this show? Do you know why they don't watch it? Because they don't know it's here. Why don't they know it here? Because I don't spend any money on promoting it. Why not? Because I don't have a sponsor. And what a Reynolds wrap, wrap would be an ideal sponsor for this, but they're, you know, foiled again. But they're not going to—they're not going to put me uh, on television on, on a regular mainstream to promote this event, because I, first of all, I'm too freewheeling. That's one thing. We haven't had this kind of fun since Andy Rooney was the last act on 60 Minutes. But they don't get that. You know, the broadcast industry is not looking for that. They're looking for people to fit into a mold. Yet they want to cross over. Isn't that interesting? See, the curious thing is. Radio and television, they want everybody to be in the party and, and inclusion and color and race and gender and age they haven't gotten to yet. Hello. But, you know, they're working on all these things. They want everybody to be, everybody is everybody. <laughs> is that Harlem? So here we are with putting everybody together, but yet they don't do that on television. They, they say they are, but they don't do, they don't put things together like this show should be on the air, just like this. Why? Because it ain't Wendy, it ain't Wendy Williams that isn't going to be there, although I like her, but, you know, she sits there and has one camera on her and does what I'm doing right here. I, I mean, if I did the show from a real studio and we had a setting, I would probably have a director and a few cameras and screw the thing up. Uh, but, you know, this is just me having my, my ad-libbing. It's, it's off the top of my head. And sometimes people are not really impressed with that. They want you to be scripted. They want everything to have a payoff. And I, I'll tell you, I'm never going to be nominated for anything that requires a reading or an acting job. I don't, that's not what I do. <clears throat>
but I am black and white. You have to admit that this is very fashionable. And why not? Uh, I, I started this whole rap today with a little bit of a takeoff on color. And uh, it's, it's just getting to be maddening that nobody wants to say anything that's overdone. And yet, you know, no one wants to say anything because it's so long overdue. And I could tell you a story. Now, you want to hear one? Okay. I was in Hollywood. Uh, there was a friend of mine, was Tom Hughes. He was a banker at Security Pacific Bank at the time. And uh, a gentleman from the islands came and wanted to make a movie. He was a black guy. And the only movie out that had black persuasion was Shaft. And uh, I think the other one was Car Wash. That, that came out, too, around the same time. Uh, and, they, and they got to be a big hit. But you know what? The guy who was uh, uh, coming to us, to me, for money, uh, I, I went to Tom Hughes and we, and we tried to get him together to get some money so he could make, black people could make films. Because the only other films they were making was Sepia Tone, which is that little off-color thing, uh, the, the uh, film that's off-color, not the actors. And the, uh, they, they uh, used to do Amos and Andy and, and some of these things that were done by white people and, and then they became black people doing it. And it, it just got, it, it wasn't, they weren't making first class movies yet. Uh, Shaft was a good one, good start. Richard Roundtree, it was a good start. Uh, that was major, it was MGM. So the guy that came to me and wanted to do this, I brought to a banker for money and there was no way that the bank was going to loan a black guy money. Now that gentleman became friends with my friend, Morton Downey Jr., who became the number one television star in the country and uh, broke barriers by taking him to lunch at 21, which is in New York where they used to have these lawn jockeys that were black out in front of the place and they were not, uh, it, it's just, uh, it's offensive. Uh, they got rid of all of that incidentally, but that's the place where the Kennedys dined and a lot of the uh, big names, political names and movie stars. Uh, the gentleman that we brought into lunch was the first time a black person had been brought in there for the lunch and turned heads and I was there. And it was Morton Downey Jr. who broke the ice and brought him in there. Uh, that guy, uh, eventually became the head of the NAACP. And he was the one who cooled down Al Sharpton, who was on Morton Downey's TV show with that uh, Tully, uh, probably Tony, that, that, that fight that was on television, whatever it is. I hate to bring it up because it's negative. But you know, uh, 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 Al Sharpton, was, uh, uh, they th they, this guy picked up a chair and threw it at him. Uh, you know, it's, it, we've had a lot of uh, racial issues, but the good ones were, if you really will pardon me, uh, there were people who were wonderfully entertaining and they had great shows and they were big stars. Uh, and uh, I would say in the music field, Sammy Davis, to Broadway and Golden Boys and, and other films, I mean, he was a big star. And, and in the uh, television area, I would say, uh, Arsenio Hall came years later. But in the earlier times, uh, there was Geraldine, if you recall. You know, we had a, a great performer who was one of my favorite comedians. And I, I think we, we have uh, passed the time when we need to pick a color. I think we're past that. I think we need to start to pick a talent. And there are some people who really can't even pick their nose. Did I break a nail? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time that we, uh, that we all take it easy on each other and start going for our ability, what we're able to do. Uh, you know, if you're built to be a trainman, be a trainman. If you're built to be a teacher, be a teacher. Whatever we're built for, you know, whatever you're calling us, and that's your own, that's your own choice. And that's where we do have a freedom of choice. And that is very American. I think <clears throat> things that don't go together. Well, I'm, I'm something. I don't go together with a lot of these, uh, with Fox and CNN. I don't go together with MSNBC. I don't go together with a lot of things. I don't, I, I don't agree that we should be paying for television when there's a sponsor. <laughs> That's like going to the theaters when you go to the movies and they show you a commercial. This has got to be a long wrap. So we'll do, we'll do another one of these things if they, if they let me. But somebody's got to start watching me because I'm saying some really good shit. <laughs> it's a Reynolds wrap. 